President-elect. Um, it's my pleasure, it's our pleasure, to welcome you this evening. just want to say a few words before we have a blessing and begin dinner. When asked about how this life might have been different were it not for a better chance, the former governor of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, who as most of you I'm sure know, was an ABC scholar who attended Milton Academy, uh, coming to Massachusetts from Chicago, he said, quote, I think you have to be able to imagine a better future before you can reach for it. Thanks to a better chance, he said, I have been able to imagine a whole new world. This room tonight is full of dreamers. The dreamers who imagined a better future for themselves, who are our scholars, current and past. The dreamers who imagine all that it would take to create and sustain an ABC program here in Amherst. But you are more than dreamers, you are doers. You all and so many others have demonstrated the conviction, the determination, the endurance, the stamina, all that it takes to make this program what it has been, what it is, and what it will continue to be. I also want to particularly honor our scholars, present and past, for having the courage to leave your homes, to come to our community, and to take the opportunities and to have the imagination that it takes and the courage to make this happen. So we all look forward to sharing stories with you, and celebrating all that a better chance has meant and is and will continue to be this evening. As Gibby said, I'm the uh, incoming president of Amherst Better Chance. Um, thank you all. We are overwhelmed by the support shown tonight. We're overwhelmed by the number of attendees who are former alumni. Uh, we sincerely appreciate everything you've done to be here, and we hope you enjoy your evening. We will now have our invitation by uh, pastor of Amherst South Congregational Church, Vanessa Cardinal. Good evening. I would like to invite you all now to join me in a spirit of prayer. Spirit of love and life, known to us by many names and understandings, we lift up this evening our gratitude for being here to celebrate one half century of community, opportunity, education, and excellence to celebrate a better chance. And so we give thanks for all who have labored to make this evening happen through planning and fundraising, preparing the space and the food which we are about to share. We give thanks for the individuals organizations and institutions who have supported a better chance through these 50 years, and for the leaders who have served on the board of directors, providing support and upholding the vision, lending their passion to tasks from the bold and ambitious to the mundane. We give thanks for those who have served as resident directors over the years, providing a sense of family and care in a home away from home. We give thanks to all those teachers and tutors, friends and teammates, whose mentorship, support, and friendship have created lasting relationships and unwavering support. We give thanks for the families who have trusted this organization with their most precious treasures, and supported a vision of a better chance by inviting us all to be part of their children's educations and lives. We give thanks for the ever-growing community of alum who continue to support this community and organization and are leading by example as they show us the diversity of ways they are striving to make the world a more loving, justice-filled place. And finally, we give thanks for the young men who, for the last 50 years, took a leap of faith 
to move to a new place, a new community, and share their gifts, their growth, their trust during some of the most formative years of, our, of their lives. We give thanks. And so, Holy One, we ask your blessing on this gathering. May the food nourish us. May it be a true celebration of 50 years of learning, community, love, and opportunity. May tonight be yet another way that we come together to support the work of this beloved and wonderful organization. And may it be a testament to the joy and connection that calls us here in support of a better chance. Amen. Hi, everyone. While we're waiting for the main course, I thought I would um, just walk around with this mic and find some significant people because, of course, we know that if it weren't for this whole community, we couldn't have this program. So first of all, when we think about the community, think about the town, um, the uh, town government, we think of the town fathers and mothers, we think of the church affiliates, we think of the um, people from UMass, the people from Amherst College, Amherst College Clause of 1969, so many groups that made this program possible. And so we thought we would spend a little time right now honoring and recognizing not only the past but the future, because it turns out that these same people and these same organizations have recommitted themselves to uh, Amherst to Better Chance. So I'm walking around with the mic because I'm looking for Lynn Greesmere, who is I'm here from the town council representing the town of Amherst. And I'm happy to pass the microphone to Lynn to talk about the recommitment of the town of Amherst. <laughs> First of all, welcome to all of you and thank you for being here on such a wonderful evening, a celebration of 50 years. 69. I remember that year. This is the year I graduated from college. So, and so did Wendy, by the way. Just to reveal a little something. So, the 13 members of the town council actually passed to a resolution, proclamation, and recognition of the 50th anniversary of Amherst A Better Chance. Whereas Amherst Better Chance was established by members of the Amherst community in order to provide a supported better chance experience for young men of color coming from resource disadvantaged school districts. Its mission is to create robust academic and social challenges, opportunities, and activities that allow each young man to realize his full potential within a closed mid community of family teachers, and volunteers, whereas the ABC program is fully run and funded by donations of Amherst community members, time and money. Through the efforts of the resident directors, volunteers, and tutors from the local colleges, as well as host families, mentors, and members of the board of directors, the community has sustained its commitment to erasing the educational gap and nurturing young men of color to realize their full potential. Whereas closing that gap and working toward becoming a fair and equitable country remain as relevant and important today as it was 50 years ago. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the town council of the town of Amherst in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby recognize 2019 as the 50th anniversary year of Amherst a Better Chance and honor its commitment to celebrating the past while building for the future by continuing to provide diverse, deserving young men of color with a better chance, thereby building a better future for all of us. We voted this on the sixth day of May. school district. My goodness, we couldn't have a program without Amherst Regional Schools. 
So um, it was wonderful, I think it was last December, that the Amherst Regional School Committee recommitted itself and the Amherst schools to the program. Um, our boys go tuition free to Amherst, um, and obviously there's no program with Amherst without the Amherst Regional School District. So Eric Nakajima, who is the current chair of the Regional School Committee, was really hoping to be here tonight. In fact, he wrote to me this was going to be a highlight of his year because uh, as somebody who graduated from Amherst High, he knows the importance of it, not just to the scholars, but to the other students. In fact, some of his football playing pals are here tonight. Um, so he's, he's very disappointed that he couldn't be here. Um, so I thought, OK, well, maybe you should find another school committee member or somebody who's going to be here tonight who could represent the school district. I thought, OK, look at the list. Now, who could possibly be here who was a member of the regional school committee? I found somebody who was a member of the regional school committee in the 19, late 1980s. You might know her for other reasons. And so I'm now going to pass the microphone to former school committee member, Ellen Story. <laughs> Eric is coming back from Japan, so he has a good excuse not to be here. Whereas the Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee voted on January 8, 1968 to approve a partnership between Amherst Regional High School and the newly proposed ABC program. Whereas the first eight ABC scholars enrolled at Amherst Regional High School in the 68-69 school year. Whereas more than 120 ABC scholars have graduated from Amherst Regional High School in the ensuing 50 years. Whereas these scholars are highly valued members of the Amherst Regional High School student body who have enriched ARHS and broader communities through their numerous con contributions. Therefore, be it resolved that the Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee reaffirms the continuing commitment to in partnership with Amherst A Better Chance, signed by Eric Nakajima and the other eight members of the regional school committee. So I'm not interested in someone who go first, but she's insisting that I go first. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mindy Dom, I'm the state rep for Amherst College. So I too have a citation from the House of Representatives, but I also have some other words that I'd like to say. Okay. So my citation reads from the House of Representatives in Massachusetts, we be hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Amherst of Better Chance in recognition of the sustained commitment of Amherst ABC both over its past 50 years as well as moving forward to nurture and to encourage young men of color to realize their full potential as learners and as leaders. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it's signed by Robert D'Elia, the speaker, and myself. And I am so honored to be here because ever since my family moved to Amherst, we've been somewhat connected to ABC, particularly through Megan Allen Hart. Um, and so, we are very familiar with the incredible program. We were just talking earlier about how it's like the only organization that has one staff person to implement the program and an incredible board and community doing every other administrative task. And my hat's off to everybody, in addition to the host families. But I'm also very honored tonight to be here because Barry and Judy Brooks are being honored. Yes. Judy about 11 months ago, and um, I hopefully I'll uh, hope bring her in here for me. I know she's with all of us all the time, but I hope that you'll indulge me in this. And I don't usually do this, so 
Um, if it's really inappropriate, please tell me later. Because <laughs> I'll look. Um, I love Judy very much. I loved her pizzazz and her sequins, her love of the beach, and I loved her direct talk and her insight. I loved her ability to comment and share information that clearly communicated her sense of right and wrong, but without judgment on people. She had the unique ability to recall stories that were completely appropriate to a situation. But you had to listen and let her finish yes. to understand the connection. I love that she loved flowers. I often felt when we had conversations that we were both on a porch in the south on a hot summer day, shooting the breeze, and Judy would drop big lessons in little sentences, ending her comments with, I won't try to imitate it, but I do imitate it on home. Girlfriend. <laughs> As if we had been discussing whatever topic it was for decades. I loved being an old new friend. She was a community leader for good reason. And her commitment to ABC set an extremely high bar for all of us. Barry always met it. I'm not sure I always do, but I strive. <laughs> When she spoke of healing and celebrating our community, it didn't sound optimistic, it sounded realistic. And I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Hi, everyone. I'm Jill Kerberford. I'm with the honor of serving you at the State Senate. So it's just, it's a great treat in both ways, right? To get to do the work and then to get to do it with Mindy Dom. Uh, and let me just say uh, that one of the reasons I went to the State Senate was to work for education uh, and to fund and create education policies that really truly allow school districts like Amherst to thrive and learners in Amherst to thrive. And the work that ABC has done for these past 50 years has really been nothing short of a revolution. Uh, in our midst, and the kind of uh, civil and human rights promise that is at the heart of affording everyone a quality education cannot be understated. Uh, so I bring you greetings from State Senator uh, Karen Spilka. She is the current president of the State Senate. I also have a proclamation, uh, and let me just uh, open it. Uh, and so this is an official citation uh, from the Massachusetts State Senate, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Amherst for Better Chance in recognition of the 50th anniversary of Amherst for Better Chance and your commitment to lifelong learning and breaking down boundaries for everyone. Be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for your continued success, that the citation true Oh, I should have my glasses on. Um, <laughs> signed by the President of the Senate. Um, and... And attested and to. And attested to, forgive me. <laughs> and attested to um, by the Clerk of the Senate. Congratulations. About a year ago, our friends at Amherst Media uh, brought the idea of producing a short video to explain the Amherst A Better Chance program. And so they reached out and worked with Sid and some of the scholars and the board members to produce this film. And at this time, while we're waiting for videos to, to circulate, we will share that video with you. Well, I became involved with A Better Chance back in 1987. A very good friend of mine that I was going to school with, Victor Alexander, um, was a, uh, an alum from uh, the uh, Amherst A Better Chance program, and he went to UMass Amherst, and he was the one who introduced me to, to the program and what the program mission and vision um, is and was at the time. Yeah, it's a national program that was founded in 1968, um, and actually we were one of the first houses that uh, started and we're celebrating our 50th year. The mission is to take young men, intelligent young men from underfunded and underserved school communities and bring them up to Amherst so they can go to the Amherst High School 
which is considered one of the best uh, public high schools in Massachusetts. Yeah, when I first arrived at the ABC house, I came with my mom and we took the Peter Pan bus up, so someone picked us up in town, I forgot who. And then like everything was going good. We were like talking to new people, she was meeting Wendy, everybody else. And then when Fred was about to leave, she started crying and I was like, don't cry. Knowing that I won't see my mom for a while, because um, I love my mom, so it was pretty interesting to see how I would change over time, considering I wouldn't be back for almost three months. We just started playing basketball, all the boys in the house. Um, There's a couple of boys who weren't really like into athletics and sports, so they were just like chill on the side. And we just like clicked automatically. So when I came to UMass again, that's first generation, you know, you were just trying to survive, you know, without any type of, of support systems, you know. And there were some support systems at UMass, but not as robust as they are today. These young men who are currently at ABC, they're me. They're me at 14 years old, you know. Um, they're trying to figure out, you know, what the next phase of their life is. Always have lots of conversation at the, at the dinner table as a way of, of keeping those young men engaged. And, and, you know, the conversation could be about politics, could be about sports, could be, you know, what they're learning in school. So there's always some type of a give and take going on. It could be that, you know, we're just getting on each other's case, you know, and having a good time. We usually have dinner all together from like 6 to 6.30, 6.45, and we all just talk about our day, have fun at the table, eat food, stuff like that. That was the first day I think I ate at a dinner table with more than five people. And then after, we just, uh, just go study in the study center. And I don't know, it just like brings us together closer. We just talk about like stuff that isn't really talked about in school. This is definitely the background and the developing hope that I needed to just keep pushing on, keep doing my work, keep doing academic work, just keep like, keep moving basically, perseverance. It's the same type of development that we've given um, our kids that we're trying to give to them. The soft skills, the thank yous, uh, the hi, hellos, you know, the, the, the way that you text. I've gotten a lot more in touch with the program and with the community itself and like, whenever I go to events or even go into town just to walk around, I see at least 10 people that I know. So I think it's just cool that you have a nice network here. The Amherst community and the extended Amherst community are the ones that fund, fund the house. It's over $100,000 a year to maintain the house and to give the support to you know, everyone who lives there. And all that money comes from, uh, from the uh, Amherst and the extended community. We have some amazing donors, you know, some long-term donors, um, some people who are one-time donors, some people who you know, will donate $10 a year, but everything counts. A major fundraiser is the Walk Run, which most folks in Amherst know as the ABC Walk. And that's the major fundraiser that happens in, in October. We call it the Foliage Walk, where there's some beautiful leaves on the ground. This is uh, Gary Mann, class of uh, 1980, here at the uh, Fall Foliage Walk Run. It's happening, uh, it's live, and we're all gonna have a good time. It's amazing to see them graduate. The ones who graduated last year, once they come back, you can see a change in them. You can see that they're utilizing some of the tools, some of the information that they've gotten into in, in the house, and they're putting it into practice. Um, as far as what the ABC program has done for me, in every single conversation with a new institution that I have, or at the end of um, our time with the institution, and I have to do this grandiose presentation, a lot of people start with their college experience, and I say for me, my experience started back in the ABC program when they took a young African-American man from the South Bronx in New York City and brought him to Amherst, Massachusetts, where I was provided the support I needed, I was provided the skills I needed to learn, and I was provided the community that I needed in order to actually be successful. And because without that, this trajectory would never have existed. I never would have gone to Vassar. I never would have gone to uh, get my master's. I never would want to get a PhD. And there are so many things here 
that are supportive and there are programs like the ABC House that are crucial and necessary to ensure the success of so many folks who don't have those experiences growing up and living inside cities. Yes, school systems are sometimes getting greater, but with the current political climate and the way that um, the public school system is just being, in my opinion, destroyed and being attacked, it, it is m so much more important that the work that folks are doing in places like the ABC House and ABC program nationally, that they keep it up, they keep supporting it, that they keep uh, moving it forward. Very special uh, part of this evening. 
needless to say to everybody in this room, when we on the board and the steering committee for the event thought, okay, how do we acknowledge the heart, the soul, the character, the integrity of this program? Well, it's very easy. It would be to acknowledge Judy and Barry Brooks.
and I've always considered Judy and Mary Brooks to be like, the chief elders in the village of people that have supported me way back when I was a young youth, back in junior high. I remember being in the office, Mr. Brooks's office, several times. And <laughs> always making the best decisions. But I remember going in there, and honestly, I don't really remember exactly what we talked about, but I remember how I felt when I left. I remember I felt that he was the coolest dude in the building. <laughs> and I gotta say, there's a lot of cool people in the house tonight, but you still get my Thank vote. It's the genuine caring and love that I felt from him, and I've always felt from him and Judy. I remember, and growing up, would be Barry Brooks Jr., a lot of little crew growing up. A lot of us didn't have fathers in our homes. I have a super short list of people who I feel are father figures to me. Barry's the to the top of that list. And now, being at the house and spending time with them, I always felt that I had to be my best self around them. Genuine. Never felt judged, but I just felt the way Barry and Judy carried himself in life. I just felt motivated to be better. I know all of us, all of our crew, Quinn, Damien, Jerome, and all the others, we all felt that way. Um, I could go on and on and on, but I just want to say that it's been a pleasure getting to know you and support. I felt the mistakes I've made, some more public than others. I never felt judged. I've always felt supported and loved by the Brooks family, and I wouldn't be staying here now if it wasn't for you and Judy. Appreciate and love you. Um, so, as one of the ways that the ABC program is going to honor Judy and Barry Brooks, is going to be to rename the study center at the MS ABC house to be the Barry and Judy Brooks Study Center. fund that will help to support um, things such as uh, SAT prep and tutors and other academic related programs. So I think that's a beautiful thing. But I like see you do the And as a gift, and as part of the renaming, there is some artwork that was made by Kim Peters and John Bolton yes. to other people who can attest to how much meaningful experience and Mark you left on their lives. So help me.
In this program this year, there have been 120 plus graduates to matriculate through the Amherst school system. And they will move on to college or professional work. At this time, we're going to ask just a few of those alumni who made the journey here to share their reflections and their remarks with us. Appropriate for us to begin at the beginning, so I'd like to. Where is Terry? Oh, Terry! Terry! Medley! Thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, let me just say good evening to everyone, and I want to welcome you to the 50th gala. 50 years celebration, half a century, five decades. Is that on? It's on. Okay. 50 years celebration, 50 years. Five decades, half a century, long time. But success, as you heard earlier, requires a very large community. There are lots of us that contributed, from the board to the supporters to the scholars to the tutors. I want to say thank you. My comments will really fall into two areas, family and learning. What we have here today is special efforts by special people. And I want to thank the Amherst ABC program. What I would like to talk about is myself, a country boy, being invited into the program. When I say country, I lived in a small town, Knoxville, Virginia, about 40 miles outside of Washington, D.C. I had never been to Washington, D.C. You talk about small, you can say, Maybe there's one stoplight. No, there's no stoplight. There's a stop sign. But no stop sign. <laughs> and I found myself going north, going north to be educated. The first stop was Hanover, New Hampshire, Dartmouth College, this summer, to give us an intensive training in mathematics, English, writing. It's where I first learned to speed read with Evelyn Woods, of course. At Dartmouth, we were asked one night if instead of going to a prep school, we'd want to go to a public high school. I raised my hand right away. I thought, a public high school as opposed to an all middle school? Yes, I'm there. <laughs> and uh, had the opportunity to come down and see Amherst. In fact, I was able to ride in a Volkswagen Bug convertible with the then Dean Ward from Amherst College. Uh, Dick Aronson, and we came down, and it was wonderful. And I thought right away, this is where I want to be. And I said, thank you, Amherst ABC. Let me talk a little bit about family. Imagine waking up one mo morning, and you have seven brothers. <laughs> Imagine that. They're all your age. You have brothers that are from the city. We have three from New York, one from Pennsylvania, one from Massachusetts, one from Alabama, one from Georgia, and myself from Virginia. Think of that. Very, very diverse. But what really happened there is we became a family. We depended upon one another. We realized that we could, we could do that. We studied together, we played basketball, went to parties. There are other things I won't say what we did, but <laughs> they were crazy. Two of my brothers are here tonight. Mike Weeks, who's on the board, and Bill Foster. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't all easy. Of the eight of us that first year, one student did not come back. The transition was just too difficult. We then added three other students to get up to 10. I want to tell you a little Barry Brooks story since we're honoring Barry Judy. Um, I had graduated from Amherst <coughs> High School when Barry was the, and Judy were the host family. But since I was here in town and they were my brothers, I was over there a lot. So they got to know me. And Barry, in addition to his work with the ABC program and others, 
he got together and there was a program that was being funded of Springfield Youth to bring them up here to Amherst. And Barry was interviewing the counselors for that summer, and I was one of those applying for a job. So I went in, and Barry was there, and he kind of looked at me, he said, oh, you have a job, I know you, blah, blah, blah. And I said to Barry, and I know this took him by surprise, I said, yeah, but what if I want to be the head guy? <laughs> <laughs> so Barry kind of looked at me, he said, wait a minute, he's a good guy, but he's young, he's gonna be the head guy. And he kind of looked at me for a moment, that he looked and he said, in essence, he said it the right thing, the right way, that really he needed a more experienced person for that role. And I will never forget that advice from Barry in terms of looking at yourself, being able to evaluate your strengths, your weaknesses, and acknowledging when so you might want something, but really it's not for you. And Barry gave me that. And thank you very much. I remember that all the way through. So let me just quickly end up with talking about learning and education, which is what really the ABC Amherst program is all about. After graduating from high school, I was able to get full scholarship to Amherst College, and then I went on to the University of Virginia Law School. And in my first 10 years out of law school, I was a practicing attorney. And the next 10, I ran the Science Regulatory Agency in Washington. And in the last 19, I had various executive roles at DuPont. In all of those positions, new learning, whether it was about new science, the field of biotechnology or nanotechnology, whether it's about looking at environmental issues, it required me to absorb and to learn. Amherst Regional High School, the Amherst ABC program, what it gave me for the first time was learning for learning's sake. And I enjoyed it. So in those new roles, those challenges, I was able to meet that because of what I learned here in this program. And it's followed me. The whole idea of learning for learning's sake. As we look at it, what we know is knowledge. The acquisition of knowledge is a wonderful thing. And then being able to use that to move forward. Amherst ABC gave me that. And I've always been appreciative and will continue to be. Let me end by again thanking all of the ABC community. And this gala gave me an opportunity to reconnect with people that's wonderful. And one of them that's really special You've already acknowledged her, you've acknowledged John Spencer, but when I look at Miss Denton, who's in the back, I remember so much what her husband, John, meant to me when I looked at him and his field of study at Amherst in mathematics. It told me that you can really be whatever you want as long as you apply yourself, and I've tried to use that skill all the way through. So again, Amherst ABC, thank you family that I got, extended brothers, the new skill sets, the learning, and the words of wisdom from you, Barry, that served me well all the way through my career. Thank you. So I just want to make an announcement uh, about Bill Foster, but I think it should come from Bill Foster. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I was going to say on a custom as I had the public speaking, but I know my brothers wouldn't let me get away with that. <laughs> uh, I am thrilled and honored that when the first day I got in the program, I started writing about the end of the program. It was 50 years ago. That writing project is done. <laughs> the title of the project is, um, it's called Booking. ABC Amherst, 1968-1971. It will be available this fall. I'll be coming back to Amherst and talking about it. I put fires out by the registration desk. I could not be more proud. And the only thing I want to say about this is that the reason it takes so long is because it took that long. Yeah. <laughs> and also, my family was my last nerve. You ain't gonna ever finish that. Well, let me see how that works. Yeah. I'm not mad at nobody. They pushed me to get it done. Just like my brothers in the UC program did, just like the program did. And 
I need to say this like it needs to be said. There were people who looked nothing like me, who were never in my neighborhood, who reached out to me and brought me here, and that path still continues. I will never forget, and it's hard to explain. Because, oh, what did those white people do for you? You know, I'll never be able to tell you. Because it wasn't just white people. It was people who reached out from different ethnicities, different uh, economic settings, and said, you are worthy to be a part of more. And I will never forget that. Thank you.
from Bertie uh, Rowan and Kenneth Clark, class of 1991. We're going to meet up front. So Kenneth and I decided we would like to speak so that we could address the crowd on this wondrous 50th anniversary. And you know what's funny is that I hear people saying, Kenneth and I actually graduated together in 1991, which is 30 years ago. <laughs> which sets in when you come here and you realize, oh my. 30 years ago, this is my roommate, by the way. So we knew the dirties and the clean stuff. But um, I'm going to give the floor to Kenneth. Hopefully, I can follow in his steps. But one thing I want to say before you have no right to say that you cannot speak because I remember every resident director said, Step up and represent. That's right. Step up and represent. So, this is Kenneth, class of 1991. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Um, I appreciate everyone here. It gave us a great opportunity, um, not only to share in a great experience, but also learn um, from each other, you know, not here. And um, it's a beautiful thing. Um, speaking to David Robinson, a meeting your brother, and we share experience where we went to the same college. And we're sitting around at the table and we're thinking, how are we gonna keep this going? Paying it forward and paving the, paving, paving the way for the young brothers sitting for us. Let, let you guys know, look, this is done with less sweat and tears and you gotta get back. It's gonna, you're gonna be called upon and then that's when this is gonna happen. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Mrs. Smith, thank you. I'm sure you learned from so you came before and, and all the other resident directors, thank you. And the community, thank you. I can't I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Okay. I'm uh gonna try to keep my emotions in check. I have a couple of things I want to say. You know, a lot of people here that have left an indelible mark in my life. And my journey started when I got off, as we all do, I guess, from that Peter Pan bus. And we kind of meet the first, first uh, person that greets us. And I met uh, Mr. Mitchell Smith. And he was tall, and I was like five, nine, maybe five, eight. And I said, oh my God. But he was warm, welcoming, and nourishing. nourishing. And I thought, this is where I want to be. I actually had the opportunity to choose between two ABC programs. I won't mention the other, but I chose that as ABC because of the reception, because of the community, because of the time. And I felt comfortable. I felt I found what I needed. And what most students really need is that environment where you want to be supported and you want to be around people that are here to make and help you succeed. And in any way possible. And I thought that this is the place from maybe a two hour visit, and I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx, I'm sorry. Boogie Down for life. But uh, in my, my commute up here, I was thinking about what am I gonna say, what am I gonna do? I wanted to make sure I paid homage to Mitch for keeping us in check and making sure that yeah, bitch. <laughs> Thank you. He took us from little kids and he made us men. And one thing I, I really enjoyed about the program that I wanted to share was, and I'll keep it brief, I'm sorry, is the, uh, the host parent program. I think that's vital. And I'm a very, very, very good example of that program. Because my host parents to me, to this day, are my, my pop and my mom. When you go have one, it's... Right, right. 
You know, they were there when you're trying to decide, how do I get through school? How do I get through college? How do I get through this life problem, this issue? And you know, although we only spent like two, three years here, my host parents have been, have been with me, Irvin Penny Rose. I love to acknowledge that your presence is why I'm here. that was chosen or how it was concocted, but they got the right formula with that group. Because I felt the guidance, I felt the compassion, I felt the love. And it's, again, that word, indelible. Because my kids called them grandma and grandpa. They want to come amateurs to visit grandma and grandpa. Papa Irv and Nana Penny, can you believe this? So, I love you, and that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Since I've been in Paris, um, 
Thank you to my host mom, Mario, she's in the back. Thank you to my mom, she's sitting right next to Mario. Uh, it's a tough decision to decide to let your child go at 13, 14 years old to have a better chance, right? That's a huge risk to say, you know what? I'm willing to play my cards and see what happens. Let's roll this dice and hope it works out for the better. I mean, it has been working out for the better for the most part, right? So I'm forever grateful to my mom for letting it happen and letting this go. Uh, and thank you to my brothers that were here while I was in the program. I see Tommy, I see Savan. Uh, shout out to y'all. Um, like I said, all the alums who've always come back and shown love, and that had, it makes such a huge difference to see folks who've been in the same place that we've been in and say, you can make it too, right? I remember Sanford saying to us, always leave a place better than when you enter it. And I've always stuck with it, so thank you, Sanford, for the words. Yeah, I, I guess I like to say a lot is that as the seed, so is the fruit. So what seeds are we planting that we wish to bear those fruit? Let's continue to plant these positive seeds moving forward. So thank you. Thank you. Um, just to add what Walter was saying, something that was really, really vital when we were students here was the Men's Resource Center in Amherst, and it was, it was like our counseling space, our space to just really let out what was going on in our lives, because in addition to adjusting to being in Amherst, we also had our whole lives outside of this. Us coming from the hood or wherever it was that we were going through and navigating what it meant to be in a place like Amherst that actually didn't reflect at all the worlds that we were coming from, that that felt like a space that we could breathe and, and work through. And somebody that facilitated that program for most of the time that we were there was Julius Ford, who's no longer with us. Julius was another type of black father figure who, once he had a baby, would bring that baby to the center to show us, like, this is me coddling a baby, this is me taking care of a child. This is important for y'all to be family and organize each other, that if something's not working, you have to speak and you have to be in one accord. Um, constantly telling us that it's okay, whatever we're feeling, that we have to advocate for ourselves, and that, that means a we, that there isn't an I inside of that, that this is important in our community. So I always want to raise up Julius's name. His legacy is an important one. Another figure that must be named, that has to be named in this space, is Brian Lewis, who is a um, He was that guy. We all have our stories. I get the best. Thank you, Pete. And the last thing I'll say, and I remember feeling this even as a senior in high school, is that yes, ABC is an important organization and ones like it, but that the work that we need to do is put it out of service. That this is a reflection of a system in a country that actually is telling us that there is not enough quality, there's not enough access for all of us, because we are some of many. There's a lot of young men and young girls that didn't get to be in that place. I also want to say that we're amazing and we're not exceptional. That there's a lot of people like us. Yes. There's a lot of people that existed in or outside of ABC. Yes. And that ultimately in 50 years we won't need ABC anymore. Yes. Because the country has changed. We don't need programs like this to be one off. We actually get to be in a system where somebody like me and Walter growing up in the Bronx actually gets to go to their neighborhood, neighborhood high school because it's good enough. Yes. And not have to sacrifice some of the things that we have to give up. Yes. For the better, of course. Yes. But what does that look like if you actually get to stay in your community with the yes, people man. that you love and that they're generating for you and not to have to step away and figure out what that looks like in the wake of it? Um, so let's commit to maybe in 50 years things have shifted enough that we don't need ABC anymore. Thank you.
the woman that played a huge role in my life and my success. And we tortured her. And we tortured her. I did. I knew I did. We tortured her. If I can ask Manor and Kuti, was that still on myself had planned on saying was uh, said already which is just so telling about what this program means right this notion of one being dropped off on a Peter Pan bus stop and being picked up and brought back to the house this notion of having a community of folks which for me meant so much coming from the boogie down coming to a place where I did not know people cared for others that much I did not know that was a thing because I was escaping that. I was escaping a system that no matter what I had to do, I was just striving to find a way to seek knowledge because that is what was important for me. And when I came here, so many people who were just committed to ensuring I was able to capture that, to ensuring I was able to achieve that dream that I wanted, that I had for myself, that other people had to remind me and instill in me was so important was just mind-boggling to hear that that is a shared journey. I can go about talking about my host parents, Nancy and David Radner. I can talk about the experience with Wendy Cole and the folks who have instilled in me the, the commitment, the drive to constantly want to give back. But more than anything, I'm just full being inside this space tonight with just knowing that there are this many people within just a small community who care so deeply and care so intimately about ensuring the success of young black men within Amherst, Massachusetts. I tell people all the time that no matter what, and as I send the journey, it always starts for me right here. I found myself here. If not going from there, I wouldn't have met my lovely wife, Mrs. Tiffany Cunningham. <laughs> if not going from here, I would not have started my family. If not going from here, I would not have understood what it meant to identify ways to give back, to seek to identify justice, to seek to fight for that, to fight for others in everything I do day in and day out. I would not have understood that if it weren't for the small step in interviewing to be a part of this just immense and amazing opportunity. So I don't want to take too much of time. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you who have committed your time, your energy, your love in ensuring the success of all of us, ensuring the success of the current students, and ensuring the success of those who will come after us. Maybe it may not have to be 50 years, but no matter what, knowing that a program like this and those who care deeply continues to exist is something that's so important to me. So thank you. Mr. Michael Weeks from the original group and current board member of Amherst for Better Chance. Thank you. You're welcome, Michael. I like that. <laughs> Good evening, folks. Good evening. How are we doing? Good. Well, uh, first, I want to first thank uh, all of you for coming out here and supporting the, the program as you've done over the years. Um, I want to take you back a little bit, just for a quick minute, to 1968. That was considered one of the most 
notable years in our modern history. Indeed it was. Many of us had lived in urban, and I was from Harlem, so my most profound memory of 1968 was walking down 125th Street as it was beginning to go ablaze after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Later that became, unfortunately, Bobby Kennedy. And then there was that, that war that was raging out of control. And folks that I had looked up as peers and older brothers had went out there and were fighting a war and didn't come back or didn't come back the same. And then folks called up and said, we got an opportunity for you at Amherst ABC. Come on up to Amherst. We got something that's involved with you, involved that might help you. And I turned it down. I wasn't about to get anywhere, nowhere away from what I felt was home. I was scared. To me, the world was going ablaze. I didn't know what it was about, but I was a 15-year-old, and all I knew is I got my mom, I got my dad, I'm going to stay close. But mom and dad said, no, you're getting out of here. <laughs> you're going to get that opportunity. And I got on that bus. What bus was that? Yeah. <laughs> You know, we ought to do some sponsorship for you. We ought to ask them to write us a check. We ought to have a bunch of folks up there in the pen. Well, I got off that bus to Amherst, Massachusetts, looked around, and the only thing that looked like Harlem was they painted the middle of the street with a yellow swine going by. <laughs> that middle line was painted yellow, but to the left of that line, to the right of that line, didn't look anything like home where I grew up. And you gotta believe that it was a little nerve wracking to say the least. But I had eight brothers who were there. Now you met two of them, Terry Medley and Bill Foster, that were part of that. It was also Herman Wilkinson from Massachusetts, Wayman Darton, also from Harlem, Bob Lloyd from Brooklyn, Billy Hancock from Georgia, and Jonas Cooper from Alabama. We came there together and figured out we gotta make this work. It's on our shoulders to make this work. How do we make a program work like this when we don't even know anything about this ABC experience? But we went through it and learned, and learned a lot about ourselves and a lot about people that were around us and realized that, you know, we had a lot more in common with folk than we had differences and that really what this program is about is open us with opportunities. Opportunities was the thing that we sort of missed and met through Barry Brooks later on, and there was folks before him like Nadine and Rudy Sims who came through, Nate Sims and Lenny Smith who was there, and tutors, and Amherst College and UMass brought tutors in that said, yo, you got an opportunity here, don't blow this. Pulled you in on the side, grabbed us where we needed to be grabbed, took us off the basketball court, wherever we needed to be, and said, no, 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 you're gonna go this way, not that way. And that made a tremendous difference. And so it's really about opportunity. And I thank the, the board, the current board, for carrying on that legacy. And Whitney Cole is doing a great job, fantastic, unbelievable. Come on. And all the board members, and that's what we're going to pass on. Mr. Nesbitt, hang in there, man. We got your back. We got, we got your back, we got that going. And, and so and it's all about creating opportunities for folks, and that's what we're really about. So I just want to leave you with uh, two or three things. And this is really out to the alums, my brothers, all right? There's some things we got to get done to make sure that this program, because you've heard from a number of people here. You've heard from uh, Bill, you've heard from uh, Sanford, you've heard from Terry, you've heard from uh, folks all over who've been through here, been through this program. But let's, let's face it, we are not all that exceptional, right? For every one of us that got through, there's hundreds of us that were left behind. Right. Didn't get there. Right. And we need to, as we climb, we need to pull. Is that right? Yes, sir. As we climb, we need to pull. So what we want, what I'd like you to do is think about this. We have a program that an occasion is an empty bed there. Yep. And when I look at a program like ABC with an empty bed, my heart sinks. Because that means there's an opportunity that's being missed by someone. So I need y'all to help us out here. Each year this board does a tremendous job in identifying and recruiting students to come into the program. 
for many reasons, not all of them are going to make it, or they decide not to. Our mama said, no, now you're not ready to go yet. Whatever that reason is, that's okay, but we need help identifying and recruiting more students to get there. We shouldn't have an empty bed, should we? No. There should not be an empty bed there. So I need y'all to help us identify and recruit potential students for the ABC program. Can y'all do that? Yes. Second thing, y'all got y'all y'all are, are doing it. I'm, I've read some of the stuff going on, the bios on there. Y'all connected every which way, and we know that one thing: if it's not about ABC, the way you make success is through a network, sure. right? Y'all got a whole network out there that we need to tap into, right? So we got some young students. We got some over here. They need to know I can call you. You can give me an internship. You can give me a summer job. You can help me with a college education. Oh, you can give me a reference for a job. That's what they need to do. Don't they do that? Y'all can do that. We can do something. We can prepare, because we got to take care of our brothers, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes. Absolutely. We didn't come here by ourselves and somebody pushed us along to make sure we got it. And we got to give back. As I said, as we climb, we got to lift. And the last thing that's important for us, because some of y'all may not have time in the network to do that, and this is the last thing I'm going to say when you turn it over, but we need some checks. Yeah. <laughs> this program runs 100% on the blood, sweat, and tears of the Amherst community. And for 50 years, it's been running on, 100, on that blood, sweat, and tears. We need a little help here. So for those of you who can, and are blessed enough that can write a check, and I saw one check flying through here, I love that, Sanford, that's nice great. Huh? It was a nice one. It was a nice one? <laughs> let's keep it rolling. Not that full. Yeah, let's keep it rolling. So if we got third, the third thing you can help us out with is, is help us write, I know this is not a fundraiser deal, but it's okay. It's okay to bring it. You know, we do the fourth book. Mike, this is our program. We want it to be here 50 more years plus. So yes. we're going to do what we have to do. Do what we got to do. Okay, so let's make sure that's happening. We got this before we do more. But let's get some checks and make support this because there's a whole legacy that goes on. And you know, Judy Brooks is looking down on us and y'all better take care of my boys. Ain't that right? So let's do this right. So thank you for your time and your efforts. And thank you for the board of the Colorado and Boston. Thank you.
advocating for educational equity and social justice. I wanted to start there just to share a little bit about me and to tell you a lot about you. As an adult, I have lived in Athens, Georgia. I have lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I have lived in Iowa City, Iowa for a hot minute. And then I went to the Mecca, Atlanta. And now find myself a resident of Amherst, Massachusetts. It's very clear what all those places have in common. Each is home to the flagship institution of higher learning for its state. The similarities are obvious. These places are often described as liberal bubbles. Communities like them often express progressive ideals. But I will tell you in my time what I have found to be different about Amherst. In Amherst, we live our values. Tonight is a celebration of 50 freaking years of living your values. Two of those values being educational equity and social justice. On behalf of all the alums, all the resident directors, I humbly appreciate everything everyone has ever done in support of this program. And I humbly ask that you continue to give, to advocate, to provide your labor, find whatever way you fit into this program that is most comfortable for you. Because those efforts are needed today just as much as they were needed in 1969. We cannot stop working to cure these ills. We're not going to solve the problem. That is not the goal of what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do here is simply the right thing. Where, how, and when we can. Your challenge is to continue to live your values. I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I look forward to helping you find how you fit into this program. To the scholars, Young men, please look around you and appreciate the love and support that is being poured into you. Take advantage of the opportunity. Like every alumni, I, I was special, but I wasn't the only one. But I was lucky enough that, like them, someone reached into Pinewood, South Carolina, where Canada Obama called the Corridor of Shame, and pulled this little boy out and said, you're pretty smart. Let's help you reach your dreams. Don't waste the opportunity. Parents, we need your support. The change that these young men go through is real. The demands and the expectations are high. But they are high because we understand what the potential is. Help us help them reach that potential. As a community, we have decided to invest in this way, in these people, in these values. I look forward to leading us in the next 50 years of continuing to do that little investment. You guys have been great. God bless. Good night.